everyone today we are talking about the business analyst working environment it's gonna be great I got my whiteboard I got my babok I got my computer I got you so stay with me I will be right back to talk about what it is like working as a business analyst and who you're gonna be working with and what are the things that you should be aware of we'll talk about it when you come back environment and I got my handy whiteboard that I bought but I'm gonna get a bigger one that I can put up and you know do some stuff there <laughs> I found that my ideas flow easy when I'm actually using a whiteboard so I do like it so today we're talking about business analyst work environment and it's just really to give you an idea of what to expect when you get your first business analyst job, as in what, who are the people that you work with, um, what kind of teams should be expecting to talk to and work with. And I wanted to just give you this quick video to talk about that some more. So, let me see if I can do it this way. Don't worry about my chicken scratch. So let's say that you are the business analyst, right? So it's gonna put you in here as a business analyst. Now, the thing is that in some companies you have both business analyst and the product owner. I'm gonna deal with the product owner with the business analyst next, but for now I'm just gonna focus on the environments that have just the BA working in a product or project team and the people that they would interact with, the teams they interact with, and I'm focusing for this first one on the functional BA. This is the BA who's writing requirements um, for a software product. Or doing agile user story. Um, so that BA would work a lot with, let's start with the first stage. They'd work a lot with stakeholders, business stakeholders. Now these business stakeholders could be different people based on the type of business you're in, but they would include people such as your customer service, Right, so the customer service people, write that better. No, that's better. <laughs> so your customer service people would be the people who are obviously the ones talking to the customer, so they understand a lot of the problem that the customer has, and so they can help explain that to you, and you can use that for improving the process. You also have your support people, right? So they definitely know the problems that the customers have. You could be talking as well with just operations. Now, of, of course, this is depending on how your organization is structured. Some people don't have operations as a separate you know, department. It all boils into customer service. But these are typically the people who know from the um, back end and even from just how the company rules are and how the clients perceive it and stuff like that. But also, you could be talking directly to clients. Right? So you could be talking to the clients as well and getting their first-hand feedback to help you to understand what the problems are for you to solve. But these are the main stakeholders that you deal with, but there could be a time when you might have to talk to executives as well to get from an executive level what the, pro what the, the thrust is. This is especially important in the beginning if you do like feasibility studies first. Um, and business case before you actually get into the depth of the problem. So you could be talking to the executive for that reason in the beginning as well. Now once you've done your elicitation and you understand what the problem is and what the output is, you tend to talk to these people to get it, but you also, oh I forgot this one, you're also going to be talking obviously with your product management team or your project management. Some companies have product management and some is just project because the project has a start and end date whereas the product is for the life of whatever that product is. So you definitely be talking to them and you tend to be in the same department um, where you report directly to someone in product or project management. So these are the people that you're talking to at the beginning. Now once you've understood what the business rules are and the business case and the problems and all that stuff from these people, then you'll be talking to your development team a lot. 
right? So your development team include your programmers and all of the technical people <laughs> that you need to, to talk to. Um, and this could include, you know, SMEs and so on who are specialized in certain areas. All of these people could include SMEs, S-M-E, which means subject matter experts. So these are the subject matter experts that you'd pick up from here. Again, once you finish talking to them, you understand their, their problems, you're gonna be going to dev. You're going to dev at this stage to find out if what, um, if, if any of the solutions that you're coming up with is technically feasible. And you're also going to dev to explain to them what you need them to build. So you would have had, by this time, you have your, your user stories, you have your requirements, and you'll be doing a lot of communication with the development team back and forth. <laughs> refining those requirements and making sure that they can be technically done and as they're building whatever the solution is they're going to need to check with you to confirm if they have to make a decision to go this way or to go that way and you're going to point them in the right direction now once they've built the solution then you're going to deal with your qa people qa quality assurance so the quality assurance specialists or these are the the engineers that's going to make sure that whatever was built by the development team actually matches your expectation and your requirements and you're going to make sure that whatever you tell them to build matches what the clients and the customer service people, your internal staff is also expecting. So you deal a lot with the QA but mainly just as like touch base, like a touch point, they want to confirm that the, the, the test cases that they've written is actually matching what you expect to happen and they're going to make sure they call out anything that's not working the way it's supposed to work with you but they're not really going to be a lot of interaction it's just going to be hey here's the list of test cases did i cover everything hey we found some some errors is it okay or you know does this need to be redone so it's more like a check based checking thing with the qa team then once you talk to your qa everything's good then you're going to start having to roll this out and this is where you start talking to people like your technical uh writers because they're gonna to need to document in a technical way whatever the change was that you had implemented. So you need to talk to technical writers, you're gonna to have to talk with training staff. So your trainers are gonna to have to go out there and tell the rest of the organization about the change and you know walk them through how to do it. Sometimes you as a business analyst will assist or you could be the one delivering the training, who knows? But if you're in a big enough organization that has its own training, then you'd have to be, um, be dealing with these people as well. Um, let's see who else you're missing here. Oh, you might also have to deal with, I call them implementation specialists. So your implementation specialists are the people who help your software talk with another software. So they may have to go implement what you've built, um, so that the two softwares that are communicating, maybe through an API or something, need to be able to understand what has changed. So you need to talk to them to make sure that they also understand <laughs> the change. So this is the gamut of people that you will be dealing with, for the most part, in a business analyst work environment. This is if you're a functional BA. So if you are more of a process BA, I mean, we don't really have like a set name that we call uh, people who do process over functional. You could be a BA that does all, both, right? But, you know, it's very common to find a lot more functional BAs or BAs that are writing requirements for software. There's a lot of BAs in IT because it's, it really demands you having a BA, right? But you could also be working on just improving a process as opposed to you know, creating new software. So if you are like a, I say a process VA, right? The amount of people that you're interacting with might be less, but it's still some of the same, same people, right? So you're talking to your clients, you're talking to your customer service, um, you're talking to your operations, You are talking to a lot of the um, the management team. I just say management here because it could be product or project. 
um, you know what I mean, product or project management. You're also talking to executives in some cases. Because a lot of the times, whatever the process is that the, the, the process is going to come up with, might need executive approval. You could always go through your product team and the product manager would be the one talking to the executive. But there could be the off case where you need direct um, sign off from the, from the executive. And because you are the most knowledgeable about what you're proposing, sometimes the product manager might ask you to be the one to deliver your presentation to the execs and to be able to answer questions. So you have to interface with them sometimes. So these are many of the people that you interact with um, as a process VA. And then once you come up with your process and you think it's good, then you do a walkthrough and you get sign off from everyone to make sure they agree with it. But then once they've signed off on it, then you need to talk to the trainers, of course, because now they need to incorporate this new process and train everybody to understand how the new system is going to flow or how the new process is going to flow. Mainly in the process where you're not really changing the software, there's not, there's not a lot of software changes. It's more like how, you know, how, how, you, how does it flow, right? What is the next steps that people should take? Where do they start? Where do they end? Where do they hand off? And things like that. So that's kind of what it is. So you definitely have to talk to the trainer at that point. And um, yeah, so these are main, the main people that the process VA talks with. And sometimes they're the ones delivering the training. Um, and they're also gonna be doing a lot of documentation. So you might have um, that the process VA writes the documentation, but you may have a documentation department or you may have a documentation specialist where you might have to you know, interface with them. So, um, you could have a separate person who documents processes separate from the BA. It's not very often because the BA, the BA is the one coming up with the process, so they should really document it. But I don't know. There are cases where there might be need for an extra uh, technical writer here. So these are the people that I think the process BA interfaces with. Let me put it up some some more so you can see my chicken scratch. <laughs> right. So that's what it is for a process business analysts and who they interact with. I don't know if I'm missing out anyone, I might be, um, but we'll see. If you think of anything else that I've missed out, you can always put it in the comments. Um, and then you have the situation where you have a, a product owner, right? So you have a BA and a product owner. This is a little bit more complicated because they're gonna be doing a lot of the same things, but you find that the PO does a little bit of different things than the BA and there are cases where they both overlap so it's a little bit tricky when you have both but i think both are very needed because depending on how big the organization is the po might be the one talking to clients the po might be the one talking to the management team the po might be the one talking to the operations team so the po has a great understanding of what it is that the problem is and then there are cases where the BA does some of it, the PO does some of it. But then this is where it gets gray, right? Where, hold on, right here. Where the PO and the BA are dealing with dev, right? Sometimes the PO is involved too because the PO's main job is to make sure they understand the business problem and to also keep the backlog um, prioritized. So it could be a case where the development team is looking at the backlog and the PO is also looking at the backlog so there's some overlap there um, and then the BA in these cases is the one dealing with QA right and the BA is dealing with the technical writer the BA is dealing with the trainers um, and the BA is dealing with the implementation specialist between who gets to deal with which stakeholder. But when you have a BA and a PO, you tend to find that the BA is more into the weeds, trying to make sure all the minor details are covered, whereas the PO is looking more at a higher level, looking at the strategic position of um, the improvement or the process and making sure 
that it's meeting the business needs a lot. And then they make sure that whatever gets into the product is what needs to be there. So the, the PO has a lot of responsibility for the backlog and making sure that you know this is a priority for what's new, what needs to be built. Once the PO has organized the backlog and decided what's prioritized, and then the BA would start making sure the developers have the right answers to any questions, that it's you know that they've written the acceptance criteria properly and that they work with QA to make sure the quality is there, that once it's done, they work with technical writers, they work with the trainers and the implementation specialists. So that's kind of what it is, guys, for the working environment and the teams that you'll be interfacing with once you start working as a business analyst. I hope you found this um, new format. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you found this format useful. I hope you found the video useful. Please like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead. If you want to, do you wait not on? Okay, so if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and like the video and check me out on my other videos.